Hello? <clears throat> I don't even know if I'm live right now. Could be, could not be, dude. Could be, could not be. We got a plan changer Ruski on our hands here tonight, folks. We're live. Check. Cool. Awesome. <clears throat> Listen. Welcome back. Or the Bourbon Junkies. Tonight, it's just me. Sean doesn't feel it. Three commercials. I'll wait. Why is there three commercials? Why? They're all, they have to be skippables, dude. They have to be skippables. There's no way they're not skippables. Am I too loud? Because it looks like it. I'm going to need feedback. This is my first time streaming. Not skippables, dude. I'm going to, I'll call YouTube right now. I will call them immediately. I will literally call them on stream. Late, Michael. Listen, dude, uh, you got to understand something. What time is it? 8.06? What did this start? Four minutes ago? 8.02, give or take three minutes? That's on time. All right. Jared O'Connor said, skip the shit out of mine, which means they some of them were skippable. That's crazy. Okay, listen. Sean, sick. Going through it, okay? He got sick. I need you guys to understand something. We got a lot of shit to do. So Sean needs to lay down and take, I don't know, what's it, 8 o'clock? Sean needs like a solid 12-hour nap. His body needs a break. Sean has become a professional painter. He's, a, he's literally... A professional painter slash mover of things slash those things, right? So you guys, you got to, Sean's at home resting. He's like, I could stream from my house. I'm like, I would rather you rest and feel better because we have pours in the park next week. Then I would have you do anything else on planet earth. And please do not come to my house because if I get sick, I'll be sick for three weeks because my immune system's dog shit. So we're here and you guys got me, dude. And I want you to know Sean's chair is, is uh, this might be the most useful Sean's chair has ever been on this whole live stream. I'd like you to know that. My belt's back there. It's right there. And I still can't get it so you can see it. It needs a dedicate. We have these panel light things right here that were really expensive, right? Um, I need a panel light and I need like a, there's got to be a belt stand, right? Joe Sullivan with $5 Super Chat. Thank you, buddy. At least Nas... I don't... Is that an inappropriate thing I shouldn't say? Is that Grease's belt or Cam's? Dude, Adam's trying to get rocked three minutes into this live stream. Deborah, I swear to God, I've put Cookie in this chair three times because I really thought this would be perfect. I thought the belt with Cookie right here may be the best of all cases. And Cookie has jumped out of said chair every time. So I did try. You and I were on the same page here. All right. Here's what we're going to do, guys. I want, we're going to have some story times. Okay. We're going to talk about what we did last week, which is probably part of the reason Sean is now sick, right? We are also, I'm just going to drink these. I'm going to be honest. These are ours. They're, these are ours. And I'm going to drink the fuck out of them. I'm so happy. We finally have made it to a point in which, like, these exist. Now, like, watch this. This is the cool part, right? So, like, dude, look at this 13th colony, right? Like, that's a ball whiskey you can just buy. And then, look at this, dude. That's just that's just Virtue Spirits Essence Single Barrel Rye Whiskey. Like, those could just, those both just exist. Isn't that fucking incredible? That might be the most incredible thing of all time, right? Oh, wait, dude, hold on. Wait, look at that, dude. There's just, oh, what is this one? Essence single barrel bourbon whiskey. This might be something that else does. These just exist, dude. It's like the coolest thing. Want to see them? Want to see them closer? Everybody likes. High def. But, oh, dude, that's not high def. That's low def. Oh, it's the lowest def. <laughs> there they are, dude. There they are. 
Okay, I hand labeled this one, so just forgive the placement. All right, I hand labeled that. Oh man. Look, I, I honestly, I swear to God, I could just leave these up on screen for you guys and just talk over it the whole time. What do you guys think about? Like, you instead of you guys looking at me, what if I just left those there? You know, I feel like maybe that's the move. Like, I guys, I I look good right now, right? Obviously, but what if instead I just left them here? You know. Whoever says this is an improvement like Lukens and Gandhi, you're never drinking virtue, dude. You're literally, we got, we, and Dustin and dude, there's no way. This is the thing. We have a list. Oh no, that was night angel. All right. That's cool. We have a list guys. And the list is people who are never allowed to drink virtue spirits, whiskey, bell, bell biv to both. Number one on the list. Literally the number one. Okay, here's what we're going to do tonight. We were What we were going to do is there's a live stream that's four years old, right? Brett Veneta, two days ago, left a comment. This live stream has 938 views on it. It's called The Future of Bourbon, where we think the bourbon train's headed. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like real quick, okay? This is just, this is where we are at placement-wise in our lives, Right? Matt from ADHD whiskey was still ADHD fishing, right? Listen, this is what Matt's doing in chat. ADHD fishing. I don't want you to read this. I want to read it to you. Had to put the toddlers to bed. They don't respect the bourbon junkies. I have a toddler. I get it. Had to tell them a story about how it's okay to disrespect Sean, <laughs> but Dan deserves better. That's what, that's what we were doing four years ago, dude. That's what we were doing four years ago. Matt was still ADHD fishing, writing in our chat, not starting a channel like he should have been, right? All right. I appreciate the hell out of you guys in like liking these labels. It means a lot to us, honestly. You know, real quick, maybe we just do, I don't know. Maybe we just do another one of these. You can even make, like, if you wanted, they could, like, fight, kind of. You know, that's kind of cool thing about. Oh, dude, if you put them like that, you see the bear and the bull. Like, down here? That's pretty cool. These are legal, dude. They're UPC'd out of their mind. Look at that. Look at all that information on the back. You guys got mash bills, proofs, age, state of distillation. I mean, there's just... Gosh, dude, I'm so excited for you guys. To... Sean, listen, Sean and I are so excited for you guys to, like, get your hands on these, enjoy them, drink them. I will enjoy it. Okay. Hopefully you enjoy them. That's the goal. And we're not, and listen, we could make a promise that we will never buy Dickel that tastes like Dickel. Okay. That's probably the only promise I'm willing to make at this point in time, but yeah, you know, all right, let me catch up on some things. Brad Smith member for 30 months. Thank you, dude. That's a long time, man. Sean said he's NyQuil out of his mind in bed right now, trying to get some sleep, which is what he needs to be doing. Brad Smith, member for 30 months. Proud of you boys. Hashtag Team Virtue. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. For real, means a lot to us. Uh, Joe Sullivan, Mudkip, says, Nosferatu was the first vampire pre-Dracula, almost as old as Sean. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> Anthony Jones says, Last Friday's pot was freaking hilarious. Cheers. So, Sean, I'm not going to tell you guys the story that Sean, Sean texted me something tonight, and I need that. I don't know if he's willing to tell this on, a po on the podcast. If Sean, I'm not, I refuse to tell it. Even if he was okay with it, I refuse because I need Sean to tell it on the podcast. Cause other than him not feeling good, I did laugh. I laughed not at him not feeling good. I did laugh at the situation though. Uh okay. Bell Biv DeBose said, can't wait to time CJ out. Remember for 31 months? That's a long time. Thank you, buddy. Uh, don't time CJ out. I missed Dan Like Super Channel. Hold on, I'm going back up. Somehow you're still the second best looking guy on camera tonight, says Dan Like. Put him in timeout, dude. Somebody put him in timeout. There's no, there's no way. There's no way. That's how we're starting the stream. That was early in the stream too. I just skipped it. 
Uh, Hawkeye, 944. Welcome to the BJ fam. Thank you for joining, buddy. Welcome to the fucking fam, dude. And then Dustin, welcome 10 more people to the fam. Thank you, Dustin, for doing that, buddy. Thank you for the 10 gifted. That's fucking awesome. If you got a gifted from, from Dustin, say thanks. And it was a lot of people, dude. Well, it was about 10, wasn't it? Sean Spath, Cam Luke, Stevens, Sure, McGurkin. Your last name is the best last name ever to say out loud. Jason Legau. Listen, these are synthetic. Okay, don't get super hyped on the cork pop. You're not going to get what you're looking for out of the cork pop, but you'll never get cork rot in your whiskey. Which would you rather have? You know, it's one of those things. You can store this thing on its fucking side and it'll be fine. You know? So, Brandon Lincoln, Quincy Powell, Andrew Huggins, and Chris Pergoo himself, they all got gifted subs from Dustin. Julie, Julie. Somebody put Julie in timeout. You have to read chat, Dan. That is what Sean does, so you know. And she put that in all caps with $100 behind it. So, okay, really quick. Oh, I'm just so happy with it. I'm so happy with how it tastes. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Listen, it's five-year-old whiskey. Tastes like tastes like it's maybe six or seven range. It, it, it tastes, it's not corn forward. It's not grain. It's like sweet as hell. It's rich. It's a little bit smoky in an interesting way. It tastes nothing like MGP, even though the mash bill's really close. It's very interesting. This is barrel number one of our bourbon, which is 59.5%. Barrel number two was uh, 50. Which one was this one? Barrel number two is 59%. It's 118, I think, on the dot. Um, Caleb P. with a $5 super chat. Sean could never in his life hold down a live by himself. He could. What do you want to? Question. He definitely does not. Here's the thing, dude. Sometimes I stream video games somewhere else, right? And there's like 10 people that watch and hang out with me while I do that. And I just, it's just like you're just hanging out chatting with you guys, which is a lot of fun. I do believe it stresses Sean out to hell and back, right? Um, Jerry Black, it's the final count. It's the final count down to the dirt. DMCA immediately. That was spot on. That was literally perfect. Julie, thank you for the crazy super chat. That's a lot of money. Stop doing that, but thank you a lot. Seriously. Okay. All oh, chats just froze. Good luck, guys. Sorry. You're going to have to listen to me ramble. Bell Bib Debo says, can't wait for. Can't wait to reach for Dickel Tabasco over Essence on the show. All right. Then he lost his mod. That was quick. Let me get here real quick. Just a second. Sorry, guys. I got to take the mod away from the fucking idiot in chat real quick. Sorry, guys. My bad. Sorry, guys. Um, Sean Opperman said, make a burr eye. Good news, buddy. Our first label is our first blend label is for a burr eye and timed out removed mod and timed him out double rocks dude literally so rocked not even i mean try next season chief you're like the fucking lions dude your alec bradley overlay is blurry dude it is blurry but speaking of blurry oh why is it blurry how we haven't changed shit Oh, dude, good job, Streamlabs. It's still blurry, and it's smaller. Speaking of Alec Bradley, there's a non-blurry one. It's a little blurry, isn't it? Right behind me. Alec Bradley, the sponsor of the Bourbon Junkies, also the sponsor of making the best cigars you could put in your mouth and suck on. Do you think... Hold on just a second. Do you, dude, do you think now that Alec Bradley is not... I just realized that both paid $5 to lose his mod and get timed out. I love that about him. Um, do you think that they would find that advertisement appropriate? Yes or no? Not Alec, like the company corporate, but for real, they are the sponsor of this live stream and the main star of the burb junkie cigar stash. We have a bunch of boxes over there. And if you're coming to Porters in the Park, they're going to be there. Some damn good ones, too. There's going to be Coronas, Gatekeepers. There's going to be Kintsugis. Cookie just howled at the door. There's going to be some Prinsados. 
there's going to be some Connecticut nanos if you're that if you're that type if you're into great cigars. So, huge shout out to Alec Bradley as always for working with the channel. If you don't have the greatest lighter on planet Earth, you can just find one, and it's an Alec Bradley pop can. You know, it looks like this, and they last forever, and they hold a whole can of butane. They're phenomenal. Thank you as always, obviously, to Alec Bradley. And I do, this might be the last live stream after what I said. So a huge shout out to them for working with the chat. I just talked to Bradley on the phone. Guys, Bradley and Alec are going to be at Pours in the Park. How cool is that? Literally both of them. Now, um, Bradley is way cooler, right? So you guys are going to like, if, if you want to like, if you have enough time to talk to both, that's great. If you have enough time to talk to one, you know, make the right, make the right decision. I hope Alec is in here. This isn't fun if Alec's not in here. Matthew Meyer Sr. Cheers, Bourbon Junkies family, 28 months strong. Let's go, buddy. Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Joe Webb. Welcome to the fucking BJ fan, buddy. Aaron A. A. Ron Atkins, my boy. We doing a competition during Pours in the Park this year. See you soon, boss. Virtue. Love it, dude. Thank you for a super chat, man. One WD, my buddy Chris says, with a $2 super chat, said, for the $41 airport hotel fund. I will tell this story right. <laughs> Bruce will under that just said, how much more do they need to pay to get a logo in focus? <laughs> I don't know, man. I bet they're willing to pay more for me to not say what I said than they are to have that logo in focus. Um... <laughs> oh man okay listen hold on so while we were in we were in Bourbon, missouri monday tuesday wednesday last week right we went out there we shipped seven you guys will see this in a virtue vlog eventually probably in two virtue vlogs you'll see that so um this is what we did while we were out in missouri we did two things that are really cool the first thing we did, we got, we moved seven barrels out there, got all of our labels sent there, moved three pallets of glass out there, um, spent a shit ton of money on shipping stuff out there. And then we flew out there and we went through our seven barrels we had. We had four barrels of seven year old 95.5 rye that are ours that were made by MGP. And then they lived at Sagamore for seven years, right? We also had three barrels of our mash bills like our contract distillation mash bill that were five years old. So that's what this is right here. The 75, 75 corn, 20 rye, five malted barley. That's one of, that's our low rye um, contract distilled mash bill. We had three of these barrels out there. They were all five. One of them, which is this one, which is why it has gold wax on it. This is one of the seven-year-old rye. Hold on. I wonder if I can get, if you guys can see the color. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong one. It's just, it's just, let me, let me compare it to something here. Hold on. Okay. We need like a light. Ready? All right. So you can, the bourbon is a good color, right? The bourbon's, what, we need like a different bourbon, dude. I need like a control. Look how light that is. How dark that there. That's a perfect control. Okay. <laughs> I'm literally a scientist, dude. When Sean's not here, that's crazy. Okay. So we have, this is just the RD one number on it, right? So we have these whiskeys. This is a nice color right here. You can see through the bottom, right? Right here. You can see my finger. This is the rye. It's just built different that my fingers behind it. You can see it move. You can't <laughs> it's so dark. It's freaking wild. We bottled these things while we were out there, right? Sean put the bung puller into this bottle or into this barrel. And when he, so the bung puller, what you do, you hit it in like that, you screw it, and then you pull it out. He hit it. The first turn, like when he went to screw it, the first turn swung, like literally spun the entire barrel around because it was so empty. We, this is the first thing we have ever we did all of this at Barrel King, by the way. This is the first thing we ever did. We ever bottled, ever tasted. Jared hadn't, dude, this was this part was really cool. 
So Jared from Barrel King was the one that like helped us make this all happen, right? Jared literally left everything on all the pallets when it got there. So when we got there, because we've not seen these barrels in person before, when we got there, everything was still wrapped up. And Jared was like, do you guys want to get into them? And it was like 100% hell yeah, right? Which is amazing. So what happened was we pulled them off the pallet. This is the first barrel we get into. We ended up loving this. This tastes wild. This is tastes nothing like MGP rye. It tastes like straight molasses cookies. It's super dark, super rich. I'm going to drink some. This is, this is number one, too. I just didn't wax it. But we bottled this on day two that we were there. There were, I swear to God, I'm, you know, I'm going to give you the backstory of how it went down. I, we're going through it and we're like, we were out there to bottle these for pours in the park. That was the, the idea is just to get some product. We, the, our goal all year has been to have a, a virtue launch at pours in the park. It wasn't to be the first launch. That was not the goal. We're just waiting on Michigan still, but the goal was to have product launch at pours in the park. So, um, or product for pours in the park. So that's why the barrels were there. So we we're hoping to do four single barrels. We loved this rye, right? This rye specifically, we're sitting there and I'm like, dude, I hope, I just, I just, I'm hoping for 60 bottles in that barrel. Jared's like, there's no way you're getting 60 bottles out of it. Sean was like, I think we're getting 50. Jared's like, I don't even know if we're getting 50. Joey, who is the guy who um, does the bottling and labeling at Barrel King, Joey comes in and he goes through, he goes, I think you can get 70 out of it. And then Chris, 1WD in chat, he was there, and he goes, you'll get 69 bottles. Swear to God, we got 69 bottles out of that barrel. Joey tipped it on its corner and then siphoned it from the corner of the barrel. So, like, we got everything out of the barrel, and I swear I sweared to God, we got 69 bottles out of it. So, there were only 69 of these out of a 7-year-old 95.5 rye barrel which is crazy low obviously like insanely low single barrel um what i was gonna say because of chris's super chat which was for the 41 dollars airport hotel steak fund is we went to dinner the last night we were done with everything everything's bottled labeled all of it has handwriting on it thanks to jared's team at barrel king everything's done right we're leaving the next morning at like literally i think we left at 4, 4 a.m to go to the airport we're sitting at the hotel i was like i don't give a fuck i'm having a steak like i don't care about anything except having a steak right now, right? So it was a $41 hotel steak, but you have to celebrate. You have to celebrate. I don't, this is like, I have like a wife and children. And then otherwise, this is like the milestone. This is the next one, like those. And then th that's how it works, I think. So anyways, this, I have to celebrate. I order a $41 steak and then Chris fucking pays for our dinner. And I'm like, don't, you're not allowed to pay for our dinner when I'm ordering celebration steaks, dude, like needless to say, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, dude. Asshole. Eric <laughs> said that rise dark with a heart. Thank you, buddy. That right. It's dark as shit, man. It's so dark. Adam Sheldon gifted five subs. If you get a sub from him saying, thank you. Appreciate that, buddy. Thank you for the five gifted man. Mudkip gifted five subs. Thank you, buddy. Oh, dude. Oh, you guys did a whole thing. I see. I just missed it. Guys, I listen, I'm going to tell you stories and then I'm going to catch up on chat. And that's kind of how this is going to bounce tonight. CJ gifted 20 fucking subs. Welcome to the fucking fam to about 30 some people and 20 of them were because it's Jacob Bowman himself, AK the C with the J behind it, dude. CJ is goaded and I love CJ to death. He's a beauty. He's like if Sean was beautiful. If you think about it that way, they're built the same, but CJ is fucking pretty. Thank you so much for the gifted buddies. And then Rob Wersner himself gifted five as well. Thank you, Rob, for the five gifted, man. All right. Are we going to be able to get that in Indiana? So here's how this is going to... I'm just going to fill you guys in with a bunch of information right away. Okay? Super easy. This initial release is for Pours in the Park ticket holders. This 69 bottle one can't go to Pours in the Park because there's 69 bottles. It just doesn't... It, it just doesn't make any sense, right? So this one is not going to go to Pours in the Park... We bottled three bar four barrels while we were out there. This is one of them. The One of our bourbons was a short barrel, like 104 bottles. 
I don't know, hundred like hundred one zero and then another number, and I don't know what the third number was, but very few. So one of our five year bourbons was a short barrel at one hundred and five bottles. Our other rye was two hundred and four bottles, and our other bourbon was one hundred and eighty bottles. So the two bourbons and the rye are going to go to ticket holders. Gary Franchi, I watched you type it, dude. I I saw it. What's up, man? I'm I'm so caught up. I got literally a pause chat on the left so I can keep my train of thought. And then I got an active chat on the right. I'm just keeping up. I'm literally like Lance Armstrong because I'm on so much gear to keep up with you guys. It's literally the craziest thing in the world. Get up here. There's no way, dude. You guys, you got, look at this. Cookies on the table. Look at this shirt. This shirt's at pours too. Patrons voted on this shirt and it's going to, and it's here. Look at it. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't, listen, this is, there's going to be a label on a bottle of Virtue Spirits that looks like this here as soon as Michigan says we're good because we've already got the labels done. So just waiting on Michigan. Oh, I do need bigger laths, Rob. Damn, dude. Anyways, this is going to be at Virtue or at Pours in the Park is merch on the merch table. So, um, but this is cookie. This is a cookie shirt. This is literally the cookie. This is. We're doing like a nod to Cookie. One of our releases is a Cookie label. We called it the Baby Panther. This is going to be the Cookie label. So, um, but needless to say, cheers, Cook. Just give me, just, just cheers your, me with your tape. Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, what an asshole. That's so crazy. Such a dick. That's so crazy. Dude, what the fuck? What is that? It's like molasses, sweet, herbal. Man. There's this weird sweetness in the front of this rye. That's like all like molasses and sugar. And then the, the finish is like a bunch of herbal notes up front. And then that underlying sweetness actually kind of is like an undercurrent that comes up behind it and slowly. Ah, it's just crazy. It's wild. I'm figus. You and me are on the same page. Um, something happened to cookie. Yeah. He got in a fight with something, something bit his neck open. And uh, I took him to the vet. And they uh, they gave him antibiotic and then put a bunch of powder stuff on his neck. And now it's just healing. But I, I got I got a sock around his neck. Like, it's tied there. Ricky was helping me with it. Because he was scratching it and licking it. Which is, like, obviously not what they want. So, you know. Needless to say, he's good now. It's healing and stuff, but he can't go outside, and he's got to keep that on his neck until it heals, but it's healing, like, from the inside out, so it's pretty disgusting, but it is, like, not infected, and it's way better, so. Um, okay, so how these are going to work are um, pours in the park ticket holders are going to get an email. They're going to be hosted on Bourbon Outfitters like our picks are. This rye we're doing a different thing with. Um, because there's so few of them. So that's kind of just off the table right now for that situation. We'll prop, we're going to end up giving some of these away at some point. Uh, just because we'll, we'll have extras, right? So we'll give some away. $100 patrons are going to be able to buy these. Um, and then we're going to give some away uh, like on live streams or we'll give a few away to like Maybe we'll give like a couple away to each tier Patreon, something like we're going to do something like that with those. We don't have this 100% figured out the short barrel yet because there's so few, but other three we have it figured out for the most part. Um, hopefully, if you hopefully the pours in the park, it'll be pick up. You're going to pick these up at pours, um, but you're going to buy them ahead of time from Bourbon Outfitters. So that's how these are going to work for the most part. And then as soon as Michigan approves our permit, What's going to happen is we're going to move all of our barrels here, start bottling here, and then we're going to have 
uh, Virtue Spirits, uh, our blend line is going to launch as soon as that's done. As soon as our barrels are up here and all that's done, our blend line is going to launch and then single barrels and the blend line is going to go to patrons um, uh, hosted on Bourbon Outfitters again. So that's how we're going to manage that right now. Would also love to, if Offerman's still in here, and I don't know if I've talked to Offerman about this or not at all, but would also love to, um, I think we're allowed to self-distribute. Our compliance expert said this. Um, we're allowed to self-distribute because we're so small in the state of Michigan. So I'd love to like drop a case or two at Opperman's or something. People can stop in at Opperman's and grab one if they're local, that kind of stuff. And we'll be able to sell out of the tasting room at Virtue. So if you come and hang out at Virtue, then you'll actually be able to just buy it there, honestly. So those are kind of our options right now, in theory. All right. 1WD, Chris gifted five members. Thank you so much for doing that, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you for the steak, too. You didn't have to do that, and I didn't order it because I thought somebody else was buying. I ordered it because I thought we were buying, and I was celebrating. All right. It was a Hilton hotel, at least. You know what I mean? Like, it could have been a worse hotel to order a steak at. Both gifted one Bourbon Junkies membership, too. Did you gift it to somebody you wanted? Who got it? Chris Reister. What's up, buddy? Okay. Listen. Another thing we did. Bruzel, these aren't numbered. <laughs> these are not numbered. So you, you, it, it's impossible to get bottle 69. This one is one of the first 10. I know that because I pulled it out of the case for quality control. What you guys got to understand is when you're bottling whiskey, somebody's got a QC. Now... This is something that immediately pisses Sean off. But it has to be done, dude. So you got to pull a bottle early and late and just make sure everything's jiving, make sure everything's the same. You know what I mean? Do all that. So um, I pulled this out of the first six because they have a six-head filler at Barrel King. So I pulled this out of the first six bottles, and I drank it. So this is one of the first six. I don't know which one. Seems like a missed opportunity. So, Bruzel, there were... Um, Somebody do the math. 204, 180, plus 180. Sorry. 204 plus 180 plus 100 and we'll call it five for the sake of it. Plus 69. Somebody do that. What's that? What's the number? What's the number? Uh, Caribou, not. No, shit, dude. I should have let you know. We won't do that tonight, buddy. Just because of the change. Sorry, dude. I'm sorry. If you were doing that, I owe you big time. 529. It is not 1,069. Rob is a bad friend. Who designed your labels? Oh, I'm going to pause that, Pops. We can talk about it, buddy. Okay. See, I got this double chat thing is the move. You pause one, you let one rip. It's freaking, that's just amazing. So smart. I'm going to trust Luke. He said 558. So, listen, I just, just again, real quick, I just want to show you all of the handwriting that had to go, right? So, barrel number. And then ABV on the front, handwritten. And then age, seven, proof, 122. Mash bill, 95.5. State of distillation, Indiana. All of that has to be written on there, but I do agree. So we, we okay, in, in Bruzel's defense here, we legit talked about writing somewhere, one of 69, two of 69, Three of 69. You know what I'm saying? So we did talk about doing it. That would, there was so much handwriting to be done. What is that? Two, four. There's six things to write on each bottle, and there were 558 bottles. So there's a lot. Jared from Barrel King. Listen, if <laughs> Jared and Rachel from Barrel King are fucking built different, and I, it's fucking wild. Those two get shit done. Like, it's fucking crazy. Most hospitable people on planet Earth. Um, which leads me to the other thing we did while we were in Bourbon, Missouri. Start blending a barrel king. And it was, dude, Jared's a phenomenal blender. It was amazing. I have to read you what we ended up with in our blend. So we did a barrel king blend while we were out there, right? We started, we were actually going to start, we were going to try and do like a wheat rye blend. And it was super funky. And... Um, Jared actually had an idea that fixed it and made it less. It was funky in a bad way for me. Like I didn't like it. We we're going to use one of our seven year old barrels of rye and I didn't like it. Two of our seven year old barrels of rye need to be either aged out or they need to be finished. Cause two of the four are like super heavy, a niche forward, weird, not great. 
Um, so let me find it really quick because I was just talking to him this morning about it. So what we ended up with, <laughs> dude, this will be in the video too. Blending with Jared is a blast. Jared has uh, Jared's hyper aware of the barrels he has there and has a really good, um, has is really good at figuring out this is what it's missing or this is what's wrong with it. I wonder if this thing will add to it and cover up some of this, this stuff we didn't like. Or I wonder if this will detract from bad parts or, you know, things like that. So I'm on Wi-Fi, dude. Oh, guys, I'm a mess. I'm sorry. If the stream looks like shit, let me know, and I'll go get the Ethernet cable. I just realized that. But this is our Barrel King blend. It's a five-barrel blend. There's going to be about 250 of them, and they're going to launch to patrons I don't, uh, either August 1st or August 7th. Haven't decided yet. So... The things in the blend is confusing as shit, by the way. So it's so, so just follow follow along here. It's such a good thing CJ had gifted 20 earlier because he said stream looks fine, but you, you know what I mean? Like that's what CJ said, which is crazy. Okay. It's a five barrel blend. One barrel. Uh, everything Barrel King does is MGP. Okay. So just keep that in mind when I say what I say. One barrel of 21% rye, straight bourbon. Blend of, so the blend is 21% rye, straight bourbon from, or just bourbon from um, MGP. And then the other whiskey in the blend is weeded bourbon from MGP, right? Those are the two bourbons in the blend. This is where it gets, this is where it gets wild. I swear to God, guys, I swear to God. This will be the best sticker we've ever done, ever. Th this barrel, this sticker that will be on this Barrel King will be the best sticker in Bourbon Junkies history. And it's a direct reference to Matt's Whiskey King Barrel, barrel King blend. And I mean direct reference. When, when you see it, don't think, you know how in rap people are like, that's a sneak disc? This is a fucking, this is a direct altercation with Matt's Whiskey King sticker, okay? I want you to know that. One So one of the five barrels was double barreled into a Barton 1792 barrel, right? Finishing a Barton 1792 barrel. One of the barrels was finished in an Elijah Craig 18 barrel, right? One of the barrels was finished in an OWA barrel that had been dumped and then had a 95.5 rye in it and then been dumped and has bourbon in it now. Does that make sense? There's, there's literally five barrels, three of which were double barreled from legacy distillery barrels. It's the freaking, it, dude, it's wild. It, it tastes like straight up fat guy whiskey. It tastes like, it tastes like it's eight to 10, 11 years old. It tastes old as shit. And it just tastes like straight up fat guy whiskey and it's dark as shit and it's just freaking awesome. So, uh, what were Jared's tasting notes? I hope Jared doesn't, uh, I hope he doesn't get mad if I say his tasting notes. They bottled it the other day. He said to us, it tastes like raspberry, strawberry, cream cheese, crepe. And then he said, link, I don't know this word, dude. L ligon, lingon, lingon berry, ligon, ligon, these no, ligon berry. So I think it's ligon berry. What's the age blend? Well, I think you go, I mean, you have to go to the youngest whiskey in it, and I don't know what that is. I think six and a half is the youngest one, maybe six is the young. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah, damn, me too, right, dude? Guys, if you like fat guy whiskey, I swear to God. I, your money back, you'll like it type shit. Like, it's, dude, it's so freaking good. Okay, let me answer its pops because I got it paused over here. So, it's, let's see. It's pops. Let me find, I had it paused, dude. Can I, oh, there it is. Who designed your labels? We found a, <laughs> love it, I appreciate you. We found a, um, branding team a marketing agency or whatever they're not a marketing agency so much they're they're like a branding team um we found a branding team and it cost us a lot of money and 
they're out of, I think like Kansas city or something like that. And I know this is going to sound weird when I tell you the name, cause it's going to be like two on, I feel like it's going to be two on the nose type thing, but, uh, they do, they help. They like work with distilleries. They work with, uh, I don't know. I, they sent a whole portfolio. They work with some other distilleries. They work with some breweries. They, they work with some like taco, um, um, dude, what are they? Taco seasoning companies. Mike's clipping. Mike's clipping. Mike's clipping. Doesn't look like it, dude. Kansas. No. Is anybody else having issues? It's just Kansas. I'm waiting. Mike sounds fine. Well, Kansas, dude. I don't know what's going on. It's clipping. It clipped a little. Oh, okay. Okay. He said a little. A bumper. Minus two decibels, dude. Fixed it. All right. Um, their name is Whiskey Design. They've been very great to work with, honestly. They have followed direction really well. They've given us a lot of really great starting points. And then when we give them feedback, they handle the feedback phenomenally. So, um, which is awesome. That's exactly what you want because you don't want to, you don't want a design team who takes offense to the feedback when it's your brand and your company, right? So, um, how this, how it works right now is, uh, our initial contract was to launch this line with them and then launch our blending line with them. And we have two blending labels that are actually already finalized because every blend is going to have a, like a different label. So um, they've been phenomenal. Things have taken longer than expected. But, you know, it is what it is. So it should stop clipping now, Kyle. It's fucking... I, I bumped her down like three, uh, two and a half decibels. If it's worse, let me know. Guys, Sean's like, you got to eat the mic, Dan. You know, and then I do it and people are like, oh, the mic's broke. So I don't think I'm going to drink out of a glass all night. Pops, that's why I th like, wait till Pops, I can't wait for you to see the blending line labels. <sighs> because we're supposed to actually get our first shipment of, of actual physical labels for the blending line soon. Um, for the first blend, I really can't wait for you to see that because I think these will stand out. Listen, if I put these on that, this on that shelf right now, no, I mean, we made our rye purple because come on, dude, everybody's got a green label, right? Everybody on planet earth and there's not a damn thing wrong with it, but Chattanooga has got a purple rye and it's, it's the best idea. Um, but this on that shelf right there, there's a bunch of whiskey to my left. You're right. And this would stand out like a mother effort, dude. And I, th our blending labels will do the same. So, all right. What happened to Sean? Sean is sick. Sean got sick tonight. So it's just me hanging out with you guys. Just straight up hanging out. What are you guys going to say to Ross and Squib when they come and knocking? I can't say nothing right now about, there's no, I would like not, and it has nothing to do with selling anything to anybody like that, but just like the, I don't, you know, it's just Adam, fuck it, you know. Uh, Andrew, I can't, there's just, that's just like a topic for later. You know, like it's not the buyout type topic. I'm just saying like the, con yeah, it's just a thing. It is. Chrissy, thanks. I appreciate it. I think that th this is one of my favorite shirts for the merch drop or for the merch table at Pours. I was outside, I was separating them all the day. We got five shirts four virtue designs one pours in the park shirt we're going to be taking card there it's going to be freaking great i i hope you guys have the best time at pours i really do and i can't wait for you guys to like physically come to virtue we're going to set this up we're trying to figure it out and as we get closer we'll be able it'll be easier but we're going to set this up in like maybe in a way in which like one or two days a week it could be staffed or something is like a hangout um and then in the other times, maybe it could be like a scheduled visit type thing or something like that. But because you guys will be able to buy Virtue out of Virtue HQ. So if you guys like want to come there and snag a bottle because you're in Michigan or you're, you've come to Michigan and uh, there's no way anybody's coming up anywhere near where we're at. But if you're in our neck of the woods or you want to make the trip, we want you to be able to buy merch if you want it there. And we want you to be able to buy bottles if you want it there, so on and so forth. So, dude, maybe Sean was in the sun and maybe that's the problem. 
his skin's all like it's still glistening, kind of like Twilight. Could be, literally could be. Have you had any of the brewery distillery alliance whiskeys? Brewery distillery. I don't think so, Chris. I don't believe so. I do not believe so. Tim Boyle, we got a drop, buddy. If you email us, I'll just tell you. You can just send stuff to the drop. It's 2014 North Saginaw Street, North Saginaw Road, Suite 125, Midland, Michigan, 48640. That's the drop. It's a, it's a UPS store. You can send whatever you want there. I can confirm Sean was in the sun on Friday. Dude, I mean, here's the thing. If, I didn't even think about if Sean went outside today and it was sunny today. He's shimmering right now. I want to go to j and by Virtue. Ooh, it's going to be a minute. <laughs> it's going to be a second, Julie. Because we'd have to, legally, we'd have to get distribution in Kentucky. Which I don't, like, I don't think that getting distribution in Kentucky would be the problem. The problem would actually be supplying a distributor in Kentucky. You know what I mean? Someday, though, I promise. I promise. Ah. <sighs> Got an office in Saginaw, Barrel. There you go. You'll be really close, dude. Technically, the technically we're in Midland with a Freeland address at the distillery, so you're really close. Dude, no UPS strike, guys. Ryan and I literally had a phone call meeting planning, like, what if they don't resolve it? Like, what do we do for picks? What do we do for, like, a Virtue drop? You know what I mean? So, how long till we can get a Virtue, Glenn? That's a good idea. I don't even know. Honestly, after how my, you know what my answer is going to be to some of this stuff? After pours in the park, when that's over. When there's lefty. I can't, I don't even know about reading that out loud, but I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it. Man, if UPS, guys, we were talking about this. If UPS would have legitimately, if they would have not resolved this before the first, it would have been a for real disaster. Like, a for real disaster. Chrissy, I think we're good. Luke, are, we're, Luke, we're good on volunteers, right? I think we're good on volunteers. I didn't want anybody that had a ticket to have to volunteer. I didn't want that. I don't want anybody that bought a ticket to go to the event to spend time at the event volunteering when they paid to go to the... I don't want that. I don't. That's not... So, it will not be on shelves anywhere next week. Jeffrey, dude, listen, you guys got to understand this. We were told 30 days on our Michigan permit. That's what we were told. 30, just a quick hop 30, right? What it's been 55 days since submission on this Michigan permit. And they are just now, they just told us like a couple more weeks. That's it. And then we got it. That's what they said. It's crazy. I don't know. I listen, God willing, they approve it. Uh, you know, eventually it won't matter how long this took, right? Like, if they approve this in a couple weeks, like they said, in two years, we won't have given a shit that it took this long. It'll just be, it'll be great. We just need it approved. So what's up, Explorer Joe? How you doing, buddy? Mike's been super buzzy when you get close. Like still? All right, man. How's I just, I'm going to rip shit down until it's fixed. Slayer. Listen, this is like my third bottle, dude. I don't know. I just, this stuff's a problem. <laughs> Oh, it's a problem. Virtue of whiskey glass. Maybe like, guys, we're working on our own glass. Hmm. We're working on our own glass with exclusive, like a custom bourbon junkies glass. Be really cool to have virtue bourbon junkies glasses. That'd be cool as shit. Uh, C Jeez, oh, Pete, CJ. CJ with a $50 super chat. Holy shit. Thank you, buddy. For real. You gifted. <laughs> Jeez, oh, Pete, CJ. Thank you for gifting the subs, man. And that crazy super chat. Now I can't afford to pay both for the hotel. Pours in the park 2023. And he spelled pours not like we do. You know what I'm saying? He spelled pours like Tom Segura and references it in his stand-up specials. You know, what did you say? Hold on. What does this say? <laughs> did you delete that, Luke? All right. Are you going to raffle off the Mount Virtue barrels? 
<laughs> the Mount Virgin. Um, the empty empty barrels. We left the empty barrels. Listen, I don't want to spoil anything. For, we'll see. Can we get an East Coast pours? No, <laughs> I'm not, buddy. I um I can't. I can't plan this in a different state. I'm sorry. I can't do it. It's too much. It's too much. I have to hire somebody to do it. What Sean and I would a hundred percent hire somebody in a different state to plan it in a different state. I'm I'm not learning all their laws and all that stuff. I can't. Um, I legit worked twelve hours yesterday. I was taking calls at dinner tonight. Um, in the last two days, it's just been I it, it's so much planning, and it's so many it's balancing so many conversations and then remembering those conversations, remembering where we're at in each place. Um, it's, it's too much. Tommy D Sean is sick, buddy. Sean is sick. And Sean has been, Sean, Sean's been working weekends at virtue, dude, getting virtue ready. Sean is, we have been like, we have just, it has just been 42 directions for weeks straight and it's listen a lot is getting done and, and a really at a really great pace a lot is getting done it's great it's fantastic but i've worked harder in the last two days right then you've worked at your job i almost said where you work then you've worked at your job in the past decade right and that's just because i know you're playing call of duty all day right so it's not like we have to have this conversation right like the last time you worked a 12 hour day was the last time you hit a golden corral, right? You know what I'm saying? Fucking rock, dude. I, dude, I've been, I've rocked both like eight times tonight. Tyler Morosco, first trip to Louisville in August for a bachelor party. If you only had one day, what's the must visit places? One day. Hmm. Um,. Um, look at that. Cookie's facing away. Do you guys see this? Cookie's shunning me. One place to go. I go wait at Michter's and get something cool. That's what I get, probably. Or maybe you get lucky at Old Forester and get a 117 series, but they just dropped them, so probably not. Both said work smarter, not harder. Key to getting ahead. I don't know, man. I feel like, like, you know, I mean, we're making progress, dude. There's like physical product. It's UPC'd out of its mind. It's UP, dude, both. It's UPC'd out of its mind. That's a, that's a GS1 approved UPC, both. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, dude, I feel like working hard is kind of working. I have a lot of gray hair though. You know what I'm saying? Man, I don't know. We were so happy, dude. When we were out in Bourbon, Missouri, it was, it was phenomenal, dude. I fell in love with Jared. Jared and I were already, like, uh, talking to Jared on the phone. I became, I felt like I became very close friends with Jared uh, talking on the phone. And then we met, hung out, met in person, and we just became the best of friends. And then we had a great time. They were super hospitable. The Barrel King blend was fucking awesome. It was so much fun. It, guys, for real, I swear to God, if Matt goes to Barrel King to blend, what you guys need to do, anybody in here that watches ADHD whiskey, Matthew Porter himself, if, you, if you're in his chat, blow his shit up and tell him to take a trip to Barrel King and do a blend at Barrel King. Like, that's what he... This is the next step for Matthew Porter is he needs to go blend with Jared at Barrel King because, like, the dude, the stuff that... that Jared like understands and can pull out of places is absolutely phenomenal. You got to have him do it. It's so fucking great. I can't wait. I, if I had the sticker done, if the sticker was done for our barrel King release, I'd show it right now. I would. And I want, I would love all of you to send pictures and send it to Matt. It's going to be my favorite sticker we've ever done. Guy that works from home, drinking whiskey, boasting about how much harder he works than the rest of us shaking my head. I mean, listen, you guys can come just do this shit for me, and I'll just explain to you what I do all day. You know what I mean? I'm more than welcome. You're more than welcome, actually. I'm not. You are. Fuck, dude. Holy shit. I started at 6.45 in the morning yesterday, and I got done. 
I was taking calls at my son's football practice at seven with the VIP lounge that we're hanging out at next Thursday, Friday. Turn around and show us on the, I already did that both. <laughs> I'm more than welcome. Dude, I guess I probably am welcome here. It's like on my property and shit. Just want to say thank you for Christmas in July. Jay, I'm glad that, listen, I hope people, some people got what they wanted. I hope most people got what they wanted. You know, I wish that everybody could get what they wanted. It's just not how barrels of whiskey work, unfortunately. Shit. Dude, Bo is trying to sneak a peek at those, those, you know. I w if I didn't, if I just like could, if I was willing to get up and walk over there, I'd show you guys all the shit that's going to be at Pours in the Park. But if you come, you'll just see it, you know. Oh, man. So while we were out in uh, Missouri, we went through three of the bourbons as well, right? Two of the barrels, we drank the first barrel of bourbon, and I was like, listen, what we needed, we didn't need because Jared was being really gracious and was going to allow us to, he was going to help us out. So, but in theory, we needed two barrels to be absolutely standalone barrels, right? Because these are single barrels, and these are not, that we can't blend in this label, right? It says single barrel on the front. So we needed the single barrels to, that we need them to be single barrels, right? We only had three barrels of bourbon and four barrels of rye. We know that most people in reality want bourbon. Like in the grand scheme of when we do picks, let's say, we do picks. And if we do a rye pick and a bourbon pick, the bourbon pick sells out 100% of the time more often. It does. It's just how it works. It works that way every time. It's consistent. I'd be willing to bet money on it. It's just, it's just a fact. It is. Bourbon seems to be a way higher selling product or faster selling product than rye does. I think there's just a bigger market for it, right? More people like, like you meet a lot of people who don't like rye. Dude, probably, honestly, in that live stream that we looked at earlier, that's back when Sean and I would be like, yeah, rye's not very good, you know? Uh, we don't like it. Like, we would say that all the time. Now... We like, now we like rye a lot now, but not everybody does, right? CJ hates 95.5. He's liked like three of them out of, I don't know, however many he's tried. He's like three. But anyways, so while we were out there, we needed two bourbons to be good because we did want realistically to have two bourbons for everybody and at minimum one rye, probably two ryes. We opened the first barrel and we, we drank it and it was like, it was the biggest relief ever. We haven't had samples of these seven years ever so we've never tasted those seven year barrels that we had and we've tasted this bourbon about a year ago give or take so we haven't had it since it was four right uh it turned five in may so it's five and however many months it's been since may so while we were out there we taste the first one and it was like thank jesus this if this is the worst bourbon barrel this barrel is a single barrel like we can bottle this barrel, and when people drink it, it will drink like a single barrel. It feels good. It's nice. The experience is great. It tastes older than five. It like it was exactly what we were hoping for, right? We taste the second barrel, and it was like, okay, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the barrel at all, right? Like nothing. There's zero wrong with the barrel. There's nothing special about the barrel of whiskey like nothing nothing stands out nothing pops it's not punchy with the flavors it's it's probably one of the best blending barrels that we'll own right it's a perfect it's literally a perfect blending barrel it'll go into a blend it'll add like a sweetness maybe a fruitiness hopefully and that's it it won't do anything else we have one barrel of bourbon left because we only moved three uh we only moved three because of cost uh, reasons, right? But it's very expensive to ship whiskey, come to find, like in barrels. It's very expensive to LTL shit. So we get to the third barrel and we open it and we're like, that's the best one. That's the fucking best one, dude. Like without a doubt, that's the best one, which is awesome because it was we our first barrel and our third barrel were standalones and they were single barrels. So one of them was 200 or 180 bottles. One was like 105. Um, this was the 100 barrel one, I think, was the way bigger yield. Let me check real quick. Yeah, bourbon one was was the way bigger yield. So, thankfully, our favorite one, 
Uh, now, after we bottled, after everything sat for like a day, I don't remember which one was our favorite. And I don't have a two open out here. But, dude, it was such a cool experience. Guys, like, so we bought some of these barrels almost, like, almost two years ago. And so it was really, really, really cool to see these barrels in person. They say, like, they had bourbon junkies written on the top of them. Um, they were Kelvin Cooperage that, you know, we know the entry proofs on these, like, because, because this is our contract distillation mash bill now, like we know everything about it, right? Like these are 120 entry proof. Like these bourbons are, these were in Kelvin Cooperage barrels, right? These were, they lived in Maryland their whole life. The person that helped set Sagamore up was Larry from LDI when it was before it was MGP. It was the distiller running LDI. It was Greg Metz's uh, um, mentor. <laughs> so if you know Greg Metz, Larry was his mentor. So the guy that taught Greg everything, that's Larry. Larry was the one that set Sagamore up, which is probably why Sagamore's, Sagamore's whiskey is so damn good, right? So getting like when, I, I guess like we've known that we've owned these barrels a long time. I've drank this whiskey before when it was a lot younger. Um, we're laying this whiskey down now. Um we have some that's like a year old, a little over a year old. We have some that's literally three months old. Uh, but to have it and have it be five and have it taste like this and to have this experience and know that we're there to bottle it was just such like an almost like an out of body, like, holy shit, this took so long to come to fruition type thing, right? So I don't know, man. It was just such an incredible experience. And it was so amazing. And it was like, we had paid any patrons that were in the area. We had to come, we, they, we invited them to barrel King while we were there. So we got to drink it with some patrons, which was really cool uh, and really special. Um, and then if they came and helped us bottle, we gave them bottles for helping us out. And they were super excited guys to see. Okay. Listen, it's one thing. There's two different levels of this shit. When you guys in chat say like, I'm so excited. I can't wait. That's really, really fucking awesome right? Like it means the world to us because it's a lot of work and it's been a long journey, right? Um, starting a distillery is a huge pain in the fucking ass. Like working on servers was a lot easier, come to find out. It just was. It just, it just, even, I, I could start from fucking scratch right now and get to the point that I was in in my old job. That was easier like than this. So it's been, a, it's just been a long journey when we were with people and seeing how excited they were in person, like for this escalated everything by like tenfold. It, it was the most beautiful fucking thing. Seeing how excited you got, like how, how excited they were in person was some of the most phenomenal feelings ever. It was so fucking great, dude. Danielle said, what do you think the rest of us do? It's called work for a reason. It's supposed to be hard. No, no, Dan, you're getting it twisted. That's an out of touch take. Let me tell you why. Dan, there's hard work, right? And then there's work, right? So I, I'm going to say 85, 85% of the population works a hundred percent. Listen, I worked in it. I did not work hard in it. I, like very rarely from time to time, maybe, maybe like a weekend here and there. But I just worked. I didn't work hard. <laughs> Dan, you're thinking everybody works hard. That's not the case. <laughs> not even a little bit. I, I would argue most people don't. You know what I mean? And then some people do. You're assuming everybody does. And I'm assuming most don't. Dude, I've listen. There are times in IT where I'm like, uh, that that'll be done in six months, and it was like a four week, four week. It's been like a four to eight week job, but that was just fine. Nobody gave a shit. It's just how it all, <laughs> it's how it all operated. Toshi Bag member for 24 months. Evening, Dan, Sean, and all. Cheers, buddy. Thank you for being here, man. Both said Papa John is Dan's mentor. Both, I'm not gonna time you out one more time tonight, dude. What? I swear to God, Bob. I'm going to smack. I'm going to open hand slap Bob in person when I see him. Right on his butt, dude. John Dempsey. Can't wait for pours. What distillers will be there? Um, 
Dude, you want me to pull up the list? Like, how how bad do you want to know? It, you know what? Go to bourbonjunk.com slash shop and then go click the pours in the park thing. The distilleries are on that page, most of them. Uh, but I don't want to forget anybody. So, yeah, hard work and hardly working. Those are things, dude. Listen, I know. Buddy, I've worked. You know how many IT departments I've worked? I've worked in, let's call it six IT departments. I've maybe met one hardworking IT person. <laughs> it's just and i'm not saying they're all like i'm not saying everyone works in it is like that what i'm saying is most people don't you know is all i'm saying uh <laughs> why no seattle individual state pick oh shit sorry buddy i think you were talking to somebody else yeah i think you're having a conversation with somebody else dan works harder than nick that's about it yeah I mean, I'm fucking obviously, dude. Holy shit. Don't, don't pick the person that's retired. Okay, both. You, you know what, both? He's rocked again. He's literally rocked again. I, I just, and it's, he's so lucky that that chat's broken. It won't let me time him out, but this one will, so I don't even give a shit. How many times can both get rocked in one night is the new question. You know, kind of depends on how long the stream goes. In that, <laughs> CJ, isn't that the truth? I'm the least dickish IT guy I've ever met you've ever met you gotta understand i say this with love in my heart because i worked in it i worked in it for 30 guys i know that you think like i'm fucking around and i was an idiot right i know you think that my iq is super high but i worked in it for 13 years i think because i did four years in college yeah i worked in it for 13 years nine years out of college i did that's true that's hundred percent accurate actually. So I've worked in IT for 13 years and I've worked at several different places in IT, different, completely different environments entirely. Most IT people are, are pretty introverted and a lot of IT people are very awkward socially. And it just comes with like the nerd or the nerd aspect of IT or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just how it's just like people that are attracted to that field are more prone to that you know personality or whatever i don't know it's whatever dude yeah i and i just don't i'm just not i listen i like to be alone a lot so i'm introverted in that sense um but i'm not socially awkward so number one sign you have a high iq tell everyone that <laughs> tell everyone it must be true Uh, yeah, you got to understand, Dan, this is a really interesting conversation. The reason that people generally work hard is passion, right? For something. It doesn't have to be for the, the work. It can be for money or it can be for a payoff or something, but you have to be passionate in order to work hard. Usually you could not work hard in this lane. I, I could like stock shelf admire and pro and not work very hard. And then I could do this and work my ass off, right? So, like, you don't have to be, you're not necessarily a lazy or non-hard worker because here or just because you aren't here. But it's maybe it's because you haven't found the thing that you're passionate about yet. Now, if you're passionate about money and you find the avenue to get it, or that might drive you to find the avenue, then, then you don't have to be passionate about the work. You're just passionate about the goal, right, or the end result. Or you could find like the job or the thing you're passionate about. And then you would like work harder because you want it to work. It's crazy. <sighs> the most dickish thing you've ever said was when you said you wanted to. Oh, okay. I'm not even reading that, dude. Oh, we're not getting to the library conversation on here. Guys, libraries are so old. It's really crazy. Um, Julie, I didn't get fired. There's no way I'm so close to time and Julie out. That's crazy. Um, hi, buddy. What you doing over there? <laughs> there you go. That's Cookie. And he's sitting. And he's just sitting. You know what? Look at that. He's sitting. And he's still sitting. That's crazy. There was a chat I wanted to read and I lost it. I'm really sorry, everybody. Drinking a Maker's Mark 46. Good daily. Also, Diablo 4 is awesome. Diablo 4 is fun as hell, man. I'm enjoying it. 
I didn't get, dude, Zach, right? That's crazy, though, huh? I got a different, I told Ricky a story the other night, and she's like, Ricky didn't know it. She's like, you got to tell that on the podcast, because uh, there's no way Sean knows it. And I was like, man, I feel like I've told a lot of people that story. I don't think I actually have. Tibia was a great game. It was. It definitely was. You could be hyper-passionate about getting paid for sure, without a doubt. There was, oh, I remember what the chat was. Hold on. Kooky Cat said, I know the dude who started Down Home Bourbon, and he concurs with the ridiculous amounts of work and government bullshit you have to endure to get things up and going. Uh, I actually heard this from a very good friend that um, sold a distillery for a metric shit ton of money. You guys should narrow that down. He, him and I were talking, and I was, it was like 8, 9 o'clock at night, and we're just talking about how stupid some of the shit that you have to do or that they're asking for or, like, how these things don't make sense, and you can't figure it out on your own. And you have to, like, there's a point where it's like, do I just submit this knowing it's wrong, but I don't know the right answer? So if I submit it, is that, you know, and just get denied and just hope for the best? We're talking about this, and he goes, why do you think he's like, this is exactly why everybody doesn't just start distilleries because if he's like, it's a rite of passage. If you get through all the bullshit, then you're allowed to have your distillery and then you can, you know, move on and then like put product out and pursue the actual goal. The goal wasn't to like get the TTB on board and then get your low, like the Michigan liquor commission on board. The goal was to have a distillery and have whiskey to put out for people to enjoy, right? Like that was the goal. And he's like, he's like, dude, it's it's just uh, you know, it's part of the process. It's like the gatekeep. The gatekeeper is sitting there. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. You can work hard without having passion. You can. That's rare. That's way more rare. You have to have you have there is often a reason you work hard. You know what I'm saying? Maybe your passion's your family and you're providing for them. Like, it, and maybe I think, I think I can just, in my brain, I'm justifying a lot of things as passion, right? I'm very passionate about it, keeping my family happy and fed or whatever. And if that's your passion, the way to do that is right now is currently to work your ass off at said job, even though that's not the end goal or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Now, listen, if you're single and you work hard at a job you hate, you're just a bad motherfucker. It's as simple as that. It's 100% simple as that. If you hate your job and you're doing it only for you and you work hard, you're a bad motherfucker. There's nothing else to it. There's not. There's not even a, there's not even another option. Thanks, Thad. I appreciate it, buddy. I wish I was good at graphic design. I wish I genuinely wish I was like a bad I wish I was so good at Illustrator. That would be awesome. I've learned Photoshop relatively well. I'll say relatively relatively well and i like now i just try to do everything in photoshop because i don't know how to do it and everything else it's like a huge disaster and it's a huge detriment to the things i need to do rob quit your job dude fuck it man you don't need it i don't know what alexa does but I, she's got it figured out you know what i mean 100 percent. man illustrator is a is a is, illustrator is a crazy freaking crazy working out is not the same as working though that's the difference dan uh, they're, they're those are very different discipline is working out because the reward is a very long term <laughs> very long it's very far to, listen that <laughs> working out is not the same as your job you know what i mean because you because working out is one thing you can switch your job you can get a different job. You can get a, go to a different, you can move to a whole different state and work in a different discipline. You could have been a welder and now you just work on computers or now you fucking stock shell. You can switch your job. Like you can't, the working out is just working. You can work, I guess you can switch what the fuck you're working out. Oh, dude, Nick's your, Nick, your checks. <laughs> I got two checks for Nick. They're sitting on my desk. Tony bag of donuts. <laughs> Nick, don't do it. No way. Nick super chat a hundred dollars to ask where his money was. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Nick, thank you, buddy. Holy shit. That's funny as hell. That's so funny. 
Oh, that's a lot of money, buddy. Thank you, man. Tony Bag of Donuts said, What's up, Shuck? Excuse me, champ. Got my first bottle of Magnus Cigar Blend this week. Thinking of heading outside with an Alec Bradley BJ Toast. Any new cigars coming out outside Patreon? No new cigars coming out. We're not even working on anything at the moment, honestly. Um, we're just not. There's just too much stuff going on. Uh, adding a project would be a... Listen, Pours is almost here. You know what I mean? Pours is so close, buddy. Pours is so close. So I'm going to time Nick out, dude. Nick's about to get fucking rocked. I texted Nick like th- four days, three days ago. I was like, you want me to just hold your checks for this month and next until you get up here? He's like, nah, send them or cash them and make it rain in ones when I get there. Those were my two options. So they're going in the mail. So, you know, what did Dan say? I saw Dan. Dan retracted his message. Why'd you retract it? Offerman Illustrator is just such a bitch, dude. It's so... (laughs) Oh, it's such a bitch. I love you too, Nick. I'm excited to hang out with everybody. I can't wait. I can't wait for... Listen, guys. It's going to be all lined up. We're going to be good. Next week's going to be chill instead of like last year was a nightmare. I'm trying to get everything settled ahead of time this year. So next week is way more chill than it was last year. Not understanding like the red tape parts this year better has been great and stress-wise saved a lot of that. I'm good at what I do because I'm passionate. I do it daily because I'm disciplined. Yeah, that's fair. I I would agree with that, Dan. Yeah, I, I would. I mean, you. Okay, listen. Okay, how do I phrase this? Not everybody has to work every day, right? There are people. Well, man, you got Julie, though. Shit. Man, I mean, you do have to work every day. Julie's out here eating caviar and shit. I forgot. I just I I was thinking like how bougie is Dan, and I'm like, man, Dan is manageably bougie, right? And then I'm like, Julie, never mind. You know what I mean? I was like, we don't all need to work. Not everybody has to have a job. Most people have to have a job. Not everybody has to have a job. And then I thought, Dan's got to have a job. Oh, Julie's going to so team Sean is crazy. Luke is with the $100 super chat. Thank you so much, dude. After you shit on me earlier, he said $100. It's a lot of money. And he said, I'm back. Did I win? Not yet, buddy, but you're so close, though. <laughs> Thank you, man. Rob said, pay Nick rent fund. Rob's uninvited. His not getting into pours in the park. Check. <laughs> Julie, listen, it's not... Julie d- thinks that if I say somebody's bougie, it's not a compliment. It's a compliment. It can be, you can, a lot of, you can be bougie and not be an asshole, which is the confusion here, right? It's kind of like Dan saying you can be passionate and disciplined, which is true. You can be bougie and not an asshole. That's true too, you know? Chris, thanks for the $1.26, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Hey, a- Ron Atkins says, I know cost of property in Michigan. This will cover it. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> and Matt, I, that, dude, I know our cost of living is low, right? <laughs> it's, guys, my septic is shot. It's gone. We are living on a uh, <laughs> very limited time because I had everything pumped yesterday because the septic's freaking gone. How do I buy a bottle of virtue? So if you're going to pours, they'll be available. If you're not going to pours, then they'll be available on Patreon eventually here in theory pretty soon and then also if you're in michigan they'll be available at some point like if you follow along like virtue spirits instagram um if you're a patron if you follow along there you'll know you know things like that for sure and we'll talk about it on here too so gosh dang it dude chris is on nick's side all of a sudden chris what the fuck dude chris i thought we were friends (laughs) Gosh. Julie always says she wants me to retire more than anything. What she meant is more than some things. Oh, I've told Julie she was bougie to her face, and she told me that was mean. And I'm like, it's not mean at all. I'm bougie, different levels, but I'm bougie as well. Oh, my gosh. 
Ben Fogelson. Did you forget to let Sean out of his coffin? He went in the sun today, dude, and he's just trying to heal from that event, Ben. But he is sick. Thank you for the super chat, man. Mike A with the fiver. Appreciate it, buddy. Broke Junkies Nick Fund. Due to 69 yield barrels. So you guys want to hear something interesting? Eventually, what I'm going to... Okay. Eventually, in a virtue video, one of the things I really want to do for you guys, and I don't think everybody will be interested. I got to figure out a way to make it short and really to the point so that it keeps everybody's attention. But what I really want to do for you, everybody, because it's something no consumers know because we didn't know until we did this, right? I think there's some things that we learned that are really interesting. And then there's a bunch of dumb shit that nobody cares about that you'll never find out until you do it, right? So what happens when you start all these things is like this, when you go as a consumer, so these are going to be this, but dude, you know what? I get to shit on somebody who's on a fucking list of mine. It, I, my lists aren't like bad lists. They're just like, you're a fucking ass. Those are, the, it's that list, right? There's a guy who is an ass. We reviewed High West Burai. My brain needs to let these things go. And I'm realizing that on stream. So we reviewed High West Burai. As we reviewed High West Burai, we're sitting there. We both loved it. It was really good. Are you stepping on the keyboard right now? There's no way. You guys want to see Cookie's butt? Because it's on the camera. Hi. Come here. There. Um, there's a guy. We review High West, and he goes, oh, it's so weird that these guys say that this $125 bottle is so great right in time for them to launch their own whiskey and make it cost $200 a bottle to, like, normal the fucking, but whatever. Dumb shit, right? So this, when this goes on sale, this is 50. Hold on, let me figure this out in my brain just to confirm real quick. This is $59.99 is how much this will be, right? This is $69.99 is how much this will be, okay? Like, the intention of this was not to, like, fuck everybody's wallet up. That's not the intention. That's not our plan right? That's not, that's never been the intention. It's never been the plan. It's not the point. It seems like a really bad long-term decision to like rip everybody's money out of their fucking wallets. So fuck that guy was long story short, right? Anyways. Um, why did I start talking about this? Oh, because I think what I find interesting is as a consumer, you go to the store and then this was $60 at the store or whatever, right? From the backside, of things this we had a barrel cost right barrels all have completely different yields right um this label costs money this label costs more money uh this cork costs money you know like this like this wax costs money the tamp the tamps aren't on these because they're all open the tamp costs money the plastic costs money everything just costs fucking money obviously and i know everybody knows everything costs money when you go to the store and you look at something I don't think you think about it in that way. You think about how this costs $60, right? Now, the point of this conversation is this, let's pretend this said two on it. Hypothetically, this says two. Okay, just follow along. This hypothetically, and in real life, this says one. These were two different barrels, hypothetically. This is number two. This is number one. Because this is how it actually worked out. I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I just want you to, to there's, a, there's a barrel, two rides in that room. I just don't want to get up and get it. All No, we have a whole blend line, and then we also have a batch line that hopefully we launch next year. That'll be like a maybe 90 to 100 proof range and cheaper. Hopefully, like that's the goal for next year. So, but right now, these are what we have bottled. Hypothetically batch barrel two, hypothetically batch one. In real life, this is what happened, okay? We paid the exact same amount of money, and I'm not going to say it right now here, but it, at some point we'll talk about it. We pay the same amount of money for both barrels of whiskey, right? I'm going to give you a hypothetical number. It's not how much we paid. I'm just going to give you, you know, I'll give you a fucking market on these barrels. Market on seven-year-old 95.5 rye in Kelvin barrels is a probably somewhere around four grand a barrel, okay? So each of these barrels hypothetically, cost $4,000 a barrel. I know that sounds super cheap in theory. Like a whole barrel of whiskey for $4,000, I think sounds pretty cheap. Now, what happens is you don't know what's in any of them. So you go to bottle. This is what I find interesting. 
This barrel has 69 bottles in it. And this barrel has 204 bottles in it. We paid four grand in theory, hypothetically, for both barrels, right? We paid the same amount for each label. We paid the same amount for each piece of glass. We pay the same amount for everything, right? So you just get absolutely fucking ripped <laughs> on short barrels in like generally, right? Now, what you can do is um, mark a short barrel up a little bit. But the problem with the, the this is this is wax dipped because it was a short barrel. What we're probably gonna do in the future is we will wax dip like really special virtue bottles it, like if a blend comes out wild or we think it's the best thing we've ever done maybe we would wax dip that if we get really short single barrels that are phenomenal that we think are phenomenal we'll wax dip that so we want the wax will in, inevitably just signify something different or special and that's how we're going to use it so but anyways so you pay the same amount for both of these barrels and then you dump them because you don't know until you dump them you dump them and you find out holy shit dude we're going to lose our ass on that barrel because what you don't understand is when you send these, let's pretend this goes to a retailer through a distributor, right? Um, we sell it wholesale to the distributor. And then the distributor marks up our wholesale like 35%, right? So if it was $20, they marked up, if we sold it for, if we sold it for $50 to the wholesale or to the distributor, they'd mark up from 50, they'd add 35% to that. In Michigan, it's different. Every state, this is where every state is going to differentiate. Michigan state minimum markup is 15%. Like DC is like 30 to 35 or something like that. Every state's different. This bottle then gets sold by the distributor to the retailer. Then the retailer marks it up 15% as the state minimum in Michigan, right? In DC, it's 30%. So if you add distributor and retailer cost to this bottle, that 65% of the cost does not go to the distillery, right? So now we're ultra fucking shafted, long story short, on a short barrel because what happened was we paid the same amount for the short barrel as we did the normal yield. And then we still took a 65% hit if we're using a distributor and retailer at 30%. It's fucking wild. It is like when you realize... That, okay, so they're getting 65%. You're getting 35%. Out of your 35%, you need to take the barrel cost, the glass cost, the cork cost, the tamp cost, the label cost, all of these things out of the bottle. There literally are times like on short barrels where you just are going to lose fucking money, literally. Like you're making 35 at the beginning of the equation. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, and then you'll make, then you'll pay taxes. On top of it. So, look, I don't know. It hasn't dropped any frames, buddy. I don't know why it's skipping. It's fucking crazy. Now, full transparency, you can legally import and pay an import tax to D.C. And then you can sell online out of D.C. and ship to, you know, whatever, however many states they currently ship to. Right? Like, that's the thing. When you do that, when you... You can pay the import tax, which is a fraction of a distributor. And you can pay the shipping, which is a fraction of the distributor. And then DC marks up 30%. You saved yourself 35%. So you, you still sold this at, you sell this at a 35% higher wholesale. The money comes to you instead of a distributor. And then the retailer gets their 30%. So it does nothing different to the retailer. All it does is make the distiller more money, right? It's fucking, dude, it's a disaster. The distributor has the best job, in my, in my understanding. They have warehouses, and then they, and they move the whiskey. They have truck drivers. Like, this is, this is my understanding of it thus far. Oh, it's so crazy. And this is exactly why, if we're allowed to self-distribute, we'll self-distribute as long as we're fucking allowed to because we can charge a higher wholesale, and then shelf price stays the same. So... Oh, dude, it's such a disaster, man. It is such a disaster. Legal bootleggers. I mean, they, dude, it's literally allowed. It's You pay the import tax, and you're good, man. And import tax is 
wildly lower than a distributor, like exponentially less. Yeah. It, dude, out of the 100%, what you need to take away from that is out of the 100% before the distiller's cost on anything at all, before the distiller's cost on the whiskey or the package the whiskey comes in, they get 35% of the fucking price you saw on a shelf if they're using a distributor. It's so crazy, dude. It's sad days, man. This is why volume is the play. This is why, like, from a financial standpoint, volume is it. Miss some super chats? All right. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Luke said cookie cat emergency vet bill fund. What I realized is in that podcast, when I was talking about cookies, vet bill, I didn't say how much it ended up costing. They told me four to 600 and it was like two seventy. I've never been happier to pay $270 for an animal at a vet. than that day I looked at her and I go 270 bucks. That's the best case that take fucking 300. Holy shit. She was so confused. I'm like, somebody told me on the phone, it'd probably be four to 600. She's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, this is great news. This is the best news. The cat's good, 270 bucks, not four to 600. Joe Sullivan, pennies to make it rain fun. Dude, pen, you imagine just throw pennies at Nick when he gets out of his car. Did you forget to let, I read that one, read that one. Bove said, Sabaro was the tipping point on Dan's cholesterol and septic tank. <laughs> No, dude, I'll explain it on the podcast. Whoever put the septic system in was literally one of the dumbest people. Low IQ, super low IQ. Not passionate or disciplined and low IQ. It's crazy. Chrissy, 250 for Dan's poop bucket fund. Oh, right, dude, that's where we're at. Okay. Oh, we had our lift station pumped yesterday so that we can uh, live our, hopefully kind of live our lives until our new septic stuff can be put in. It, and we can pay like a kajillion dollars. It's just, it'll be a lot of fun. Third, four, four grand is nothing for a six single barrel. So it's not, but that's the wholesale cost, right? So like, this is the funny part. Normal people can just buy whiskey from brokers or distilleries or whatever. Where it gets fucked up is like normal people aren't like allowed to bottle, Right. And they aren't allowed to store whiskey. Like, you need permits to store it. You need permits to blend it. You need permits to bottle it. You need a distillery permit to do all that stuff. So you can, like, pay a broker, buy the whiskey, go buy a barrel of whiskey. You can buy fucking 100 barrels of whiskey. Keep it in somebody else's warehouse that they have bonded under the, with the TTP. You can do that. Like, that's all legal. The, the problem comes in when you want to move it to your space or you want to bottle it or something like that. Matthew Porter himself, dude. Matt, we watched a clip at the beginning of this uh, video. Sean's sick, by the way. Matt, that's why he's not here. We watched a clip at the beginning where you said that you, you know what? You had said literally, I'll read it to you. You were ADHD fishing at the time. I want you to know that. You said, had to put the toddlers to bed. They don't respect the bourbon junkies. Had to tell them a story about how it's okay to disrespect Sean, but Dan deserves better. That's what you said. It was four years ago. I was 29. So it was pretty great. And I love you for it. Matt, I also want you to know, like, with all due respect, so you don't have to rewind and watch this again, because I said some shit about you. We did a Barrel King blend, and the sticker on it is directed at you. I just want you to know that. I don't have it, or else I just show it to chat. I don't have it. It's not done yet. But... I've it the the idea is all out to the illustrator right now. The illustrator has it, I'm supposed to have it in the next three days now, and I just want you to know that it's directed di I, directly at you. I just it's important to me that it you know, and it's a with all due respect thing. It's like I love you a lot, but Matt, you need to go to Barrel King. It's such a fun fucking place, dude. They're so great. They're so great. They're so great, man. The whiskey business sounds very lucrative. What's so interesting about how the lucrivity of it, some would say, is it's lucrative for so many parties, like so many hands in the freaking kitchen, dude. There's like, if the distiller's the chef, they got way too many of like the, the helping people. You know what I mean? I don't know what the word is. 
<sighs> what are you streaming on my channel from your house on August 14th? Oh, shit, dude. A little Bruzel ADHD whiskey collab. Dude, Bruzel does a fucking whiskey hunt in Colorado, brings the hunt to ADHD whiskey, puts the video out, and then does the live stream with the bottles. That's the fucking move. Matt finds good shit, too, actually. Oh, damn. Bruzel's going to come back with wild shit. Too many cooks in the kitchen? It'd be... No, because the distiller is the chef or the cook. It's like... What's the distributor? I don't know. The distributor's like the fucking waiter. There's too many waiters in the kitchen. Holy shit. That's the best analogy ever. The waiter's literally the distributor, dude. They picked it up. They put it over there. They're done with their job. Fuck that shit. Pay me. Oh, my gosh. Wow. There it is. 132. All right, everybody go subscribe and watch Bruzel's videos so that he can afford to keep he can afford to keep making hunting videos, dude. Holy shit. Oh, dude, you're going to nine states? You're gonna hunt in nine states? That's crazy. Waiters don't make any money? Right. Isn't that crazy? How that we should just start tipping distributors. The difference would be like the waiters would be the ones storing the food, I guess. But that's a good analogy, guys. That's a really good analogy. That might be one of my better ones, honestly, like ever. Too many waiters in the kitchen. <laughs> no, no, no. The restaurant would be the retailer. The chef is the distiller. And then the waiter is the distributor, dude. This is literally the perfect analogy. But I tell you what, here's the thing. Hear me out. Sean said not very good. <laughs> That's a great analogy. I don't, <laughs> I don't care. Okay. You got something to say? Say it to the people. Tell them. Go. Say hi. Got it, dude. Cookie's the best. Cookie has, a, like, legitimately ruined all cats for me. It's crazy. It's crazy. He's ruined all other cats. I told Ricky this today. I don't want another cat. I'm not interested in owning another cat ever. None of them are going to be like Cookie. What is that virtue stuff? Does he hear the cat speaking? Oh, look at this. Yeah, come to find out. It's absent. Oh, man. I work for one of the distributors in Michigan. Let me know when you want to start distributing. Damn it. Ryan's like, Ryan's going to fuck our shit up now, dude. <laughs> this is the thing. You know what the thing is? When you start doing volume, there's no other option. Distributors are like literally the, the only option. It's true. If they can find a better way to structure the... Th Holy shit, dude. Came in hot. If they could find a better way to... Uh, oh, you guys want... Hold on. There it is. Dude, do not show them the b-hole. Tuck the tail. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Look at... Dude, look how... That is... Cookie's, Cookie and I literally communicate in English. I want you to know that. He's literally magic. He can just, he can literally just talk in English. It's crazy. You guys missed it. You missed it? Like you had to, <laughs> dude, you had to literally physically be here in person. Only Sean saw it. Everybody missed it. Walked out pre Cookie, uh, you know, fight to the death, literally. Walked outside. Cookie sees a rabbit on the ground, gets down and like hunt just immediately the fucking just <laughs> that's like a transformer, but if they were a cat. So got down. <laughs> oh, dude. Matt, get the fuck out. I need you out. Because every time I do something dumb, I immediately think that's gonna be clipped. Um Matt, stay here actually, because I want you to watch something in just a minute. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Walked outside. I'm with Cookie. 
there's a rabbit in the yard. Cookie gets down in the transformer position that I made the noises for about a moment ago. I don't want Cookie to kill a rabbit because I like that the rabbits live here. They're very, um, they feel very safe. Like you can like get really close to the rabbits. They don't really care at all. The deer are the same way. Like we don't hunt here, right? All the animals just live here freely and they just like, you can just get, you just talk to them and shit. They don't run away. So anyways, I go cookie like that. I swear to God in hunt position down, literally aerodynamic AF, right? He stands up, turns around, walks back to me. Find me a better cat. Literally. He's like, he's like, he's like the best dog. Oh, look at that. I just have my hand up. He's like, what's up, man? I literally need cat cookie to live forever. So if you guys figure out a way to make that happen, just hit me up and we'll just inject him with some shit. But I would love for him to just live forever. So. Okay, dude. Oh my gosh, Jarrett. I'm not going to kill the deer, man. <laughs> Well, Shook's Matt Madness final round. High score ever be beaten. Me and Cam tied, dude. Cam hit 69 the year previous. So me and Cam have the highest. You know what I love, dude? You know what? I, I can count on this, too. Chris, Bo Chris Boozalizia. I feel like if you say it, who's the guy in the movies? He was in Spy Kids as the dad. Black hair. Very handsome man. Probably pretty old now. Beautiful accent. Who's that? Who is that? Antonio Banderas, I bet. Did I get it before you guys did because of the delay? It's got to be. His accent for Chris Buzalencia's name, Antonio Banderas? Damn. Is that what I said? It's not Morgan Freeman, Matt. You're an idiot, dude. Um. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, dude, I'm sweating. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, dude. anyways, dude. um, he would say Chris Bozalensi's name th the best. Like, his accent is exactly what I think of when I see his name. Okay, Matt, I want you to watch this. It's going to take me one second. What I was going to say is I love that I can count on Chris Buzalencia's every time Cookie's here to be here. It's like a fucking, it's like perfect. Chris is here, Cookie, like, if Cookie's here, Chris is in chat. You know what I'm saying? Always. I love it. Okay, hold on. It was at 25 minutes. Matt, I need you to see this, dude, because I just want you to know that I put this out into the universe and it came true. I want everybody to know this, okay? Fuck them. Hey, bro, we said it was... Sorry, the context. We're doing a blind on this live stream. Somebody sent us a Templeton rye. And then this, this happened. It's a rye? And we weren't fucking wrong. Hey, we Holy nailed shit. that shit straight off the bat. Why is it so orangey though? Dude, it's, yeah, it's- Give me that piece of paper. It's like candy. Let me see that. You got one on us, sir. All I wanted to see was Dan spill it and Sean make it. Holy cow, what you wanted. Yeah. 57.2%. Oh my gosh, I'm literally the greatest of all time. I like it <laughs> doesn't matter. Okay. Like. Give me the belt, some Aaron Rodgers Super Bowl shit was right now. I'm not gonna fucking say that. Oof. I'm hoping he just fucking forgot. What was I? I, I detected a four proof difference. Is that where- Look at that. I called the belt four years ago. That fucking belt right here. I called the strat four years out. Find somebody better, chat. Good luck. Find somebody better, dude. Four years out, I called the belt, dude. I, I just, there's nothing more magical than what I did on that. I just, I was watching this today, right? I was watching this and I literally called it. I just, there it is. There it is right there. Right there. It's not arrogance.
Four years ago, I said, give me the belt. 2023 Dan ate the Dan in that video. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm scared. Whoa, whoa. Why don't you fucking check yourself at the door, right? Because I'm skinnier now. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I had to be like 260 in that video. I had to be. Yeah, because we the gym was still on the up uh, behind the camera in this. Hold that belt on. That's a good idea, dude. Both is about to get rocked again. I mean, dude, it's just the strap. Metal. If you if you think about it, metal on metal. You know what I'm saying? Oh. I keep this thing so clean you can see your own reflection in it. Ready? I'll see yourself. Okay. All right. This is not. Dude, where is it? It's right up. Yeah, you know what? That's not working. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> can you see it like that? Oh, wait. We almost hit it. Perfect. <gasps> nope. Hold on. Oh, there. No, gosh dang it, dude. Oh, oh, there she is. Shoot him a gherkin. Looking forward to meeting you guys next weekend. Two and a half hours in the car with Zerk. Pray for me. Oh, Zerk is literally one of my favorite people on planet Earth. Literally. I love Zerk so much. Uh, Zerk. Uh, dude. One of my, ah, dude, one of my favorite parts about Zerk, if you guys get to meet Zerk, it's, 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 it's like an honor. And here's how you'll know if you met Zerk, right? Zerk wears button up Hawaiian shirts only period. Nothing else. Well, he wears shorts too and flip flops, but shorts, flip flops, button up Hawaiian as Zerk drinks throughout the day, Zerk removes one button, Right. By the nighttime, depending on how much Zerk has drank, all buttons are eventually removed. So when you meet Zerk, you're going to see a full button Zerk, right? When you're done with your evening and Zerk is done with his evening, you're going to see a full unbutton Zerk. And that's how you know where Zerk is at. You can actually follow his alcohol consumption based on how many buttons are still buttoned up. It's fantastic. Set up for close shot. I can't have it on the table. It takes up too much room, you know? Was Matt not in here when we watched that? Holy shit. I swear to God he wasn't in here, was he? That's going to, you know what? I think we're not friends. That's crazy. Oh, he just posted it. Okay. Oh, he gave me a link. Hold on. Welcome back. You guys want to watch a Matt video? Wait, what does it say? First one. Wait, why is there a little emoji thing in front of my chat? Matt Porter, ADHD Whiskey, how about this for com competition? The first one minute, five seconds. All right, guys, one minute, five seconds. Oh, my goodness, this is – Matt, dude, Matt, what, you posted that Booker's video. I watched it, too. I can't believe you bought another Booker's. I guess I can because it was your kid's name. But I buy everything named Luna, and nothing's named Holden. That being said, you look fucking amazing, dude. Back to ADHD Whiskey, my name is Matt. And tonight we are drinking a whiskey that cost more than any whiskey I ever bought before whiskey. The Bardstown Bourbon Company is holding a competition for the world's top whiskey taster. I knew that I had to enter this competition. I had to be, I had to make it known that I was the best, that I was the man, that I was the breast man, the best man, and the guest man. And I think I will win the competition. Why am I so confident? No idea. Maybe it's maybe it's the old bourbon talking. Or maybe it's the unibrow talking. No man with a unibrow has ever walked into any circumstance or any conversation or any competition feeling like they didn't belong. That is all I have to say about my unibrow. And that's all I have to say about me winning the Bardstown Bourbon Company top whiskey taster on the planet award and twenty thousand dollars which is pretty nice sounding all right guys hold on just a second dude. <laughs> i 
fucking Matt, dude. Holy shit, Matt. Look at this. There may have been. Look at this, Matt, right here. Look how good that motherfucker looks. That's phenomenal, dude. That is legitimately fucking amazing. If you don't get a... Dude, if that doesn't... Matt, you look so good, man. Gosh dang it. You look so fucking great, dude. Matt, you look amazing, buddy. I love that for you. I mean, I love it for me, too. If you know what I'm saying. Bromance, Matt is one of my favorite people in the whole world. Pinky. Pinky promise. I pinky promise that right now. Matt is one of my top 10 people. Let me see. How many people I got? I got kiddos and wife immediately, right? Always. Matt's a top tenner. Matt's a top tenner, dude. I love Matt. I do. <laughs> Cookie. <laughs> Cookie's a top tenner. I don't think Cookie's not. Cookie's not a top tenner. Cookie's a top ten animal. Cookie's a top five animal. Cookie's a top three animal. I have two dogs and Cookie. And Cookie's a top three. So, but. Rename the live. Dan comes out to Matt. That's a good name. I, he already, I mean, I, he, he, was, he was already aware. It's not, this isn't a surprise for Matt. All right. Okay, guys. Is teachers going on? Dude, we've been live for two hours by ourselves. This isn't even fucking hard alone. This is crazy. You just talk to you guys. This is easy. I think I told like a half an hour story at one point. I don't even told. I said somebody's name. I don't even know what name I said right now when I was trying to talk about Antonio Banderas or whatever. Is that what I said? I'm going to have to watch that back. I'm going to have to. Matt's going to be at Pours in the Park. It's going to be phenomenal. I really wanted to do a podcast with Matt here before Pours in the Park, but I don't think we're going to have time. Damn it, dude. Prime Mark Collins. Fuck! <laughs> dude, do you think Mark Collins really hates me for real? That's crazy if he does, because we'd be friends in person. You know, it's one of those things. People think they hate people, and then we hang out, and they're like, no, nah, everything's cool. You know, it's one of those things. Wednesday late night podcast. Oh, shit. Maybe that's the move, dude. CJ's going to stream Fall Guys after this. I don't think Teachers is around, man. Oh, is he really? Damn. Matt does it every Friday by himself? I know. Lots of channels do it by themselves. See, here's the thing. I just stream constantly, or I used to stream more often, but I just stream by myself somewhere else. So I feel like it becomes stream by yourself is easy if you're used to it and willing to talk basically to yourself and ramble. Wasn't Mark that guy you hate? I don't hate him at all. He just said that I had cheated during Matt Madness. And um, the shitty part, of, part about him saying that is that I didn't. And like he, what he was trying to do is take away from my win, which is really shitty, right? Uh, because listen, three years running, I've, I've performed pretty well. In, like, every advent, I perform really well. And so, like, I kind of have a track record of not being shitty at it. It's one of those things, dude. So when somebody's, like, a shithead, you're like, hey, man, don't be a shithead for no reason. Like, that's crazy, you know? But Jared Smart said, I went to Pours in the Park, and it was just a church giving away free food. You wouldn't believe my disappointment. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> nah, Mark, listen, here's the, the crazy part is, is Mark would never look at my eyeballs in person and say I cheated And Mark and I would have in Mark and I would be friends. And I don't know who Mark is. I'm sure we would get along just fine. Just wake up and piss excellence, you know? All right, guys. Yeah, Mark did say new Matt, dude. And Matt said, I think Matt defended him, you know? All right, guys, listen, I don't think Cheaters is here, so I don't think he's going live. But I appreciate the hell out of all you guys hanging out with me tonight. It was a lot of fun. Sean got sick. Oh, really quick, before we leave, for real, hold on. One second. Like, like genuinely for real. One second. Um, 
I haven't heard back yet. But uh, everybody, if you pray, then pray. If you send positive energy, do that. If you fucking uh, do whatever you do, right? But our boy, Chris Reggie, which everybody in this chat probably knows, at least the name, right? Our boy, Chris Reggie, uh, is going through it. And I think everybody knows he's going through it, right? Uh, I believe that he had um, some, f some, some surgery yesterday. So if you got, listen, if you pray, pray, if you fucking want to send energy or thoughts or whatever you do, do that. Right. Uh, but he's going through it and needs all the love he can get. And he's our fucking boy. He's been around this channel literally since like two or 300 subs or some shit. He sent us our first bottle of whiskey ever. The first bottle of whiskey that this channel ever received was from Chris Reggie. So he's our guy. And he's really going through some shit right now and can use the love, right? So send the love, send his, send it his way. If it fuck, listen, don't hurt to send it, right? And if it doesn't help, it doesn't help. But if it, it definitely doesn't hurt. So we love him. I hope he's doing good. I haven't heard back. I'm waiting to hear back. But I haven't heard back yet. I mean, I appreciate you guys. Appreciate this community. We take care of each other when we can, always. And we love you guys. What is this, uh, Luke? What's this? Sure, dude. Fuck it. He's live in an hour. Slap shots Roadhouse, dude. There you go. If you guys want to hang out somewhere, let's see, man. Luke, Luke just posted a link in chat. If you want to hang out somewhere, he's live in 64 minutes, which is a while from now. But I don't know if he's waiting on us or not. I have no idea. I'm sorry this is not the live stream everybody uh, planned on. Just is what it is. I had a great time with you guys, and I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. So... Slap shots going on for Cheech. There you go, dude. Link right there. Luke, Luke put it right in chat. Click that link right there, and it fucking is there, man. All right. We love you guys. Like Luke mentioned, there's like 20 pours in the park. Tickets left, give or take. Have somewhere around 300 people there. It's going to be a good time, hopefully. You know, God willing, it's going to be a great time. I really appreciate you guys for real. Thank you guys for sharing tonight with me and sharing uh, like this with with us, with Sean and I. So something we've worked off, worked our asses off on. I can't wait to share the future with you guys. It's going to be the best fucking time ever. Swear to God. So thank you guys. We love you. We'll see you on Thursday. Thursday's a virtue video. Please click on it. I'll probably do a premiere. See you then.